Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and if you're new here this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and anything that I might have learnt along the way and I also post some regular tutorials if there's a significant skill that I think is worth sharing. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. So it is, uh, what is it, it's the third, fourth, what is it, it's the fourth Wednesday, the 4th of October and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia. So I'm going to start with, I don't have any finished objects this week, um, but I'm going to start with a friend from the vault and that's what I'm wearing at the moment. It's the Stratford Tea by Amy Christophers and I made this in 2015, so it's, I guess it's about eight years old now um, and it's from a knit scene magazine. So I don't um, knit much from magazines or books lately, um, but Knit Scene had some great patterns in the, this is from Knit Scene in 2011, and around that time, pretty much every issue of Knit Scene had things that were worth, I thought worth knitting and were really, um, really enjoyable. But I just, I haven't, I can't even remember the last time I bought a magazine. Oh, actually that's not true. I have bought some making magazines and some Lena magazines, um, but it's a bit, it's not a regular part of it. I certainly don't subscribe to anything and it's not, um, it's not where most of my knits come from. Um, anyway, so back to the Stratford tea. Um, it's, uh, I knit it on slightly smaller needles. So I used a 3.5 for the body and three millimeters for the edging. So one size down. And I used Cartier Espiga yarn in this red color. So it's got um, some really nice lace detail here and also on the back. Um, and just some garter edging. Um, yeah, so the back and the front are pretty similar. There is some um, short row shaping for the shoulders. And what else is there? Um, let me just quickly, sorry, I, I meant to write this down before um, as to whether it was bottom up or top down. It is actually bottom up and I don't knit a lot of bottom up um, sweaters because I do like to be able to try things on. Um, but yeah, I knit it bottom up. The lace was really pretty straightforward. Um, I quite like with lace, I don't mind lace on the um, yoke, but I don't usually like it where it comes down into my bust area. So where you would actually sort of see the cup of the bra. So here it's, you can probably just see the tiny bit of the cup of the bra peeking through. So I, I sort of prefer it if straps I can deal with in a nude bra, but I don't really want to see the, the actual cup with, with lace anyway. So, you know, it's funny, I'm wearing it. Um, and one of the reasons I'm wearing it now is I rarely wear this top mainly because I'm not sure what to put it with. Um, so I'm wearing it with some white pants now, and that's kind of the only color that I feel comfortable wearing this red with. I just can't, um, I don't really wear it with blue jeans. I suppose I could wear it with blue jeans, um, but I'm actually thinking about over dyeing this um, when I do some dyeing this weekend into like an eggplant purple. So I'm curious to hear what you think, like is it, um, I don't know, I'm wearing it now, I feel like happy in it, um, but I just don't reach for it very often. So yeah, like even if I'm wearing white pants or white a white skirt or whatever, I usually wear something kind of pastel with it rather than a big bright red. And maybe it's the location of the red, like right up against my face. Um, I'm just, maybe I feel a bit self-conscious with it or it's a little bit too here I come. Um, yeah, anyway, um, I, like I'm wearing it now and I think it's like, it's quite nice. It weighs um, just under 200 grams. So it used four balls, which is 480 meters. And I knit the smallest size. Um, my gauge on this yarn was uh, 20, 21 and a half, 22 stitches, which was pretty much with that one size needle down, which is pretty much bang on the pattern. This pattern you can purchase um, from Interweave individually now so even if you can't get the magazine um, for eight dollars us so and it, it's a nice pattern the only thing i'll say is you probably can't see and i probably need to block it again there's an armhole treatment here like sorry we there's an armhole edging which is just in garter but it's sort of rolling in so it probably could do with just another block and um but you know i think it's okay so it's pretty much just mostly straight up and um yeah the the sleeves are just that little bit of edging there in garter and same for the pickup for the neckline and the bottom is just a few rows of garter and a needle size two sizes smaller right so that's my um, friend from the vault and I might get changed from it now so that I can try some of my other things on um, some of my works in progress 
Okay, so I'm up to my works in progress. This is the Ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi, and I'm knitting it using um, tin lena. This is a very tiny little bit left of the first ball of tin lena and La Bienna May silk mohair. So I have two balls of this. This is the first leftovers of the first ball and I have one skein of this. So I've got 440 meters of the tin lena and 500 of the La Bienna May silk mohair. And I'm knitting it on the recommended needle sizes um, over six mil. So I did a long tail cast on, knit the body. So I'm following the pattern exactly, uh, except I used a different cast on, but that's okay. Um, twisted rib, um, split for the sleeves. This is where I'm up to now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch now to the, um, to a tw the twisted rib and um, sort of finish it around here. So because of the, because it's so see-through and, and, um, and airy, I'd have to wear something underneath this anyway. So as a result, I don't mind if it doesn't, if it only just hits the top of my jeans because I'm gonna have something underneath it. So um, this is the closest kind of cami that I have to skin color. It's sort of more like, like it's definitely not skin color. It's not white, it's sort of beige. Um, and I am, I am gonna go look for a, because um, you can see here that this here is different to this underneath. And I think I'd prefer there to be either to have a camisole that comes higher or a camisole that's closer to the skin color so it doesn't look that um, look that different from here to here. Um, yeah, so that's um, Ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi and in, I really love this color. I'm also going to do short sleeves. So I think what I'll do is I'll finish um, this ball and then I will, um, just leave this on holders wherever I'm up to and do the sleeves because I'm thinking that the sleeves might actually just pull this up a little bit. So with the sleeves, I'll probably just do, cause it's already kind of short sleeved already. If you think about it, there's not a lot. I don't really like it where it's just bound off there. I do want to add some ribbing similar to what I did to my purple short sleeve one. I think on that one, I did maybe six rows and then about five rows of twisted rib. I'm not sure if I'll even do that much. I might just do a couple of rows even, and then the um, twisted rib and um, and bind off. So I'll have it like it'll be quite um, quite short sleeved, and yeah, so it really won't use much yarn at all actually. But I do have probably about three or four inches of ribbing uh, left to go. I want to see if there's any. So I'm using um, uh, this is for the uh, fruitful hands net along fall into ranunculus. And I think I'll probably even knit another one after this one because I'm really, yeah, I'm just really liking it. It's feeling quite warm though. So even though it's going to be a top, the silk mohair is very warm. And like this is quite light, but like I'm feeling pretty warm in it right now, actually. Now I think about it. So it's probably more like a fall, um, even though I'd say it's, early, well, I guess it's not early spring now. It's, we're sort of into mid spring and the weather's been really hot here in Sydney. So yeah, it'd have to be a warm-ish day to be able to wear it actually, to be honest. So that's Ranunculus. So my second work in progress is the Theatop Top by Suzanne Mueller. And I'm knitting this out of Sanders Garn Lena, which is like a worsted weight cotton linen blend. And I'm really liking how this is coming along. I had to go down two needle sizes to get gauge. So I'm knitting it on a 3.5 millimeter for the body. And I used a 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing and I did a tubular bind off for the ribbing um, on the neckline and I've done one armhole. I thought what I'd do is I'd actually show you how it looks when the armhole isn't finished and how it is finished and how much it changes because you might feel like when you try it on with the armhole not done you might think oh no this isn't going to work and I need to rip it back. So this is the armhole that's not done like not finished and you can see you can it's quite open and gapy um, you can see my camisole, even if I didn't have that camisole on, you could see my bra and that's, um, I mean that camisole come, sits pretty high. If I didn't have it on, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear this. I just happen to be wearing one because it's not long enough. But normally I would wear this just with a bra and I don't need a camisole underneath it because if you, if you look at, this is the, sorry, so that's the unfinished one, the unfinished armhole. And this is the finished armhole. So you can see, you can't even see the camisole. I did a pickup ratio of um, two out of every three on the straight section and three out of every four 
um, on the angled section and then one for one on the cast on stitches under the arms. That's sort of my usual ratio. And I think it's working really well. There aren't any back short rows, so it's like sitting a bit higher at the front than at the back. That's not the end of the world. I mean, I could just sort of pull it over. I mean, it's not gonna do that because it's sort of sticking onto the camisole at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be great. I'm really, really, really happy with it. And I'm so pleased with the difference between the finished armhole edging and the unfinished. Like you would just not think that that's gonna work, but it really does. So yeah, so really happy it's not pulling. For me, that armhole length is just right. So, you know, maybe a smidge on the high side, but it's not pulling into it. Like it's not, I'm not feeling constrained or anything. Um, and it's certainly high enough to cover my bra. So I could have maybe picked up a couple of extra stitches, but I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I wouldn't do anything different and I can definitely see myself knitting another one of these because I think um, I've just got it on with jeans at the moment, but I actually think this is a really nice stylish top to wear um, with some work pants, sort of, you know, some brown or, you know, like um, khaki sort of work pants I think it'll look really nice so yeah really really happy with how this is coming out and I don't have a lot more to go on the body um, I'll sort of take a look at the pants that I'd probably wear it with for work and make sure it's gonna be long enough because I would only wear this with a bra not a camisole so I'd make sure it's long enough to cover um, to cover the waistband and maybe a little bit more so that it could tuck in without because as a teacher I'm I'm not always writing on the board because I'm writing more on my laptop now, which projects onto the screen. But still, there are times when I get up and write on the board and obviously there you're going to be or I'm moving around with the students. So um, I definitely want it to be covering like I, you, nobody wants to see my waist at work. It's unprofessional as a teacher. So um, there are probably some professions where it doesn't matter. But as a teacher, I, I need to be like properly covered and the kids don't want to see that right nobody nobody needs to see that um well my husband but <laughs> my kids or whatever if I'm at the beach but at work no so yeah I'm trying to think is there anything else I was going to mention oh um so annoying I did the um neckline on the 2.75 millimeter needle and then I did most of the armhole ribbing on the three mil needle and then it just looked a little big and I was like gee it looks a bit bigger than the neckline and I hadn't bothered to check I just went, oh yeah, 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 ribbing two sizes smaller. And I didn't even check what I did for the um, neckline. It's just, and anytime I think, oh yes, I'll learn, won't do that again. Well, I'm definitely gonna do it again, I always do. So not on every project, but I can't pretend that I, I've learnt my lesson. Um, yes, I seem to keep making the mistakes, the same mistakes over and over again, but it's okay. It's it was very easy to rip out, and I just I just had to rip the whole thing out because like I picked it up on the three mil needle. I could have probably gotten away with coming back to the pickup, but I was like I just can't even be bothered. Just pull it out, start again. You know, it's only wasn't that many stitches to pick up. Right, so that's the theater top. That's my second work in progress. Okay, so this is my favorite things knitwear camisole number five. I'm knitting it out of um, Volmeyer's Lace Garn in the colorway Schwefel. I went down a needle size to a 2.75 millimeter needle and I used a 2.5 millimeter needle for the um, pickup for the double knitting on the side. So I've done it on one side, but I haven't done it on the other side. Um, this hasn't been blocked at all. And that's obviously quite tricky with ribbing to know like when you block it, how much to stretch it out. Obviously it's gonna stretch out a lot on your body. It's only, I'm not standing up because it's only just, I'm only just, you can see that yellow there. That's where I've gotten to in the body and there was a, um, a break in the yarn. And so I took that opportunity to just put that on holders and do the, because this is the only ball that I have. I only have a hundred grams. So I thought, well, I'll do, I've done the neckline pickup. I've done the pickup and the double knitting. And you can see um, here that it's quite, high so and I'm wearing a strapless bra at the moment so you can't see my bra at all it's very racer back and I think one of the things is that it's stretching out naturally over my bust but here there's nothing to stretch it out so it really like it's f like more exaggerated pulling in than I would feel like it's it's that's pretty that's a little too much um, it's it's like that on the back but not maybe not 
I don't know, maybe it's the same on the back, I can't see behind me. <laughs> um, but what I think I'll do, and I might try after I've done the second armhole, um, is to actually block it and um, maybe even pin that section out a little bit so that, because my body won't pull it out. My bust will pull it out here, but my body, there's nothing for it to stretch over. So here, like the gauge on that, just from my bust stretching it out, is gonna be significantly like larger than the gauge here where it's there's nothing to pull on it. So I would have to, to have it sort of, see how it's sort of, how tight that is compared to that. So I probably need to wet block it and stretch it and pin it. I just can't, I reckon that will just want it like exactly what it just did then. Um, I think that might look a little better, just a little bit more. Otherwise it's just like, why does your top like barely cover your, <laughs> barely cover the, your upper torso? Anyway, so I think that will be, cause that's what I think I'd like to do. I'd like to block it to about the same as what my, um, what my chest is pulling it out at. So that is, let me see, was there anything else? Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting for me was with the double knitting, you're instructed to cast on a bunch of stitch, like cast on five stitches and then, you know, do some yarn overs to, to create the double knitting. So you've got your nine stitches and then you come around and then you have to graft, but you're not told to provisionally cast them on. And then you've got these live stitches and you're grafting it onto stitches that aren't live. And then the link in the pattern to grafting is to two live stitches. I'm like, but I don't have two live stitches. I've got one set of live stitches at the end. And then the first ones weren't provisionally cast on. And even if they were provisionally cast on, only five would be in the provisional cast on. The others you create with like either a backward loop cast on or I did yarn overs. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit uncertain as to like what the designer intended. Did she intend you to do a provisional cast on? Or well, what I ended up doing was I ended up picking up stitches. I ended up picking up five knit stitches and um, grafting them with the five knit stitches, five live knit stitches. And then on the other side, I picked up four stitches on the inside and grafted those with the four live pearl stitches. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out, but I'm just not sure. There was no instructions to do that. So. I'm curious um, as to what other, if other people have made this, what they did when they joined that. That's what I did. I picked up four, five stitches on the outside for the knits, four for the pearls, grafted the knits with the knits and the pearls with the pearls. So um, that was the only thing that I wanted to mention on this. I think for like, I mean, this is, for me, this is not really, a, this is not a work, um, this isn't a work top. Uh, it's too, like this amount of shoulder um, showing isn't, It'd be more like a, you know, it almost feels like, it's not really a date-ish kind of color, but it does feel like something that I would wear like with an, a pretty skirt or nice pants to wear out to dinner. My fourth work in progress is Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. And I don't think I'd started the color work um, last episode, but I've done about, maybe I had started it, I can't remember. Um, I've done about half of the color work rows. So I've just done 19 rows and there's 36 um, color work rows. So um, yeah, I'm knitting this with, uh, let me see, I'll just put it on. Um, Volmeyer's Twin in the colorway Feldmaus and um, Ching Fiber, and that's the recommended contrast color. So it's got this, a huge amount of fluffiness in it and that is the colorway um, pink lemonade so I'm really happy with those two together they're playing really nicely and it's very similar to the colors that Andrea chose um, which is a sort of a brown and pink um, uh, I'm even though I'm halfway through the color work like in terms of the yoke depth there's still quite a bit to go so I'll do the rest of the color work and then the pattern says just to continue the um, continue um, in the round until you get to, for my size, seven and a half inches, but I'll just try it on and make sure it's at a good spot. The sleeves seem pretty tight on this, so um, I'll have a look at other patterns, other tops that I've made with Volmeyer's Twin. I've made a few actually, and I'll have a look at what my stitch count was on those, and if I like how they're fitting, and I'll just match the, um, the same the same stitch count. So I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle for the body. And I used, even though the pattern said use a 3.25 for the ribbing, 
I used a three because it seemed the neckline seemed quite large and that's even still quite large that's with a three which is two sizes smaller I used the long tail tubular cast on that Andrea recommended and um, you know a couple of setup rows of double netting and then you know so it's quite it's quite a thin um, a, a small amount of ribbing not very much and there's also I'll just turn this around there's some short rows for the back um, so yeah, so I'm really, like I'm enjoying this. This is actually a really good um, colour work first knit if you've never um, knit colour work or if you want to do your first one in a sweater um, because there's no long floats. Like I think five stitches is the longest that you pretty much have to carry the yarn anywhere. And like for me at, that, at this gauge of about six stitches, that's less than an inch and I'm very happy. I'll show you um, my floats on the back. I'm really happy carrying the yarn six, like five stitches that's um, less than an inch that's totally fine and it's really forgiving like if you actually use this recommended oh recommended yarn um, sorry I was really trying to stop the clanking it um, because it's so fluffy it really sort of um, works really well for color work because it sort of blends over um, the other yarn so yeah I'm really really happy with how that's coming along and enjoying that so they're my four works in progress that are all garments different kinds of garments but they're yes all garments um, my next work in progress is Exploration Station um, by Stephen West and I've actually made quite a bit of progress on this so I'll, knit it, I'll show it from the top I've actually finished the brioche um, section I'm really I'm gonna try and not have a clank I finished the brioche section and I'm up to the, um, and then you do sort of the demarcation and then I'm up to the slip stitches section. And let me see, I had, um, uh, I'm knitting on the recommended needle size, sorry my head's all over the place, four millimeter needle and I'm using the uh, two colors that Stephen used which is antler and neon peach. And so, and I even went for other colors that are quite similar. So he used El Greco and I used, um, uh, graphite because that's what I had in stash and I picked up a skein for this um, this color of Swiss yarns in the colorway reindeer I usually don't like using I like to use all the same um, brand yarn in a project I don't usually like mixing unless it's sort of obviously meant to be different like this one but um, all of these yarns are single ply fingering weight they're all you know pretty much kind of interchangeable as long as you've got that kind of content and you know they're all 100% um, super washable so yeah that's the reindeer color that's um, I did have a bit of a mistake um, when I was knitting this on the first row um, I think I just like you know it's like knit three knit front and back and then I got to the end and I just did a knit front and back at the end as well because I'm so used to kind of doing that at a pattern and knit front and back at both ends but there was no knit front and back at the other end so I'm coming back and I'm like because it's a textured, textured stitch with knits and pearls and then slips and knits, everything was off by a stitch. And I was looking at it going, is that right? Is that what it's meant to look like? And because it was on the very first row that I did it, I didn't even know. And I'm looking at everybody's Ravelry pictures, trying to see what, like, what's it meant to look like? Am I slipping on the knits or am I slipping on the pearls? And anyway, I just, I went back and unknit a whole row. Um, and because it was sort of on top of this here with the double yarn overs, I just unknit the whole row. Sometimes I'll rip back and um, and then just put it all on the needles, but with one row, it's probably easier for me to just knit back, um, uh, un unknit sort of one stitch at a time. Um, yeah, so that's, that's actually getting some really good progress now. Now that the brioche is finished and now that I've worked out what, where I need to be on the slip, this slip stitch section and I'm not assuming what I'm reading is what I'm reading. I'm actually reading the pattern and following the pattern, not what I think it says. Um, now I've sort of got that down and I can, this is sort of, I can knit this and read and you know, um, I don't have to pay quite as much attention. I do have more antlers somewhere else. I've got, I think another whole skein cause this is, um, yeah, this was stash yarn. Pretty much everything was stash yarn here, except for the, um, except for this Swiss yarns. Right, so that's Exploration Station by Stephen West. Um, two more works in progress. The Sophie Scarf. 
So um, this is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. I'm knitting it on um, a 3.5 millimeter needle, which is the recommended needle size, using Skein Merino Cashmere DK in a, um, I over dyed this with Rit Cherry Red. And um, this marker there shows where, um, so I increased to 20 stitches instead of 33. And then I knit straight to where I would have got for 33 if I'd increased out to 33 stitches. And then now I'm um, continuing on and what I'm hoping, oh, um, so I'll knit to like I'll block it or I'll count the rows probably, how many rows this is, count the rows until it looks like I'm not far off decreasing and then coming down to a point. So what I'd like, and I'll, you know, I'll check to see if this works, is um, I think this will work. Hang on, I'll just, I'll just tie my hair back. I think this will work because what I want it to be is to be one wrap around um, like that where it's not doubled and sorry that like that and then this is coming around so i think if that's midway that should be enough to tie maybe a smidge more although i do have to block i, I blocked it up to here and i haven't blocked the rest of it so yeah so that's the sophie scarf by um petite knit and i'm just completely following the pattern oh i'm not completely following the pattern i went up to 20 stitches and then just went straight instead of to 33. Um, yeah, so that shouldn't that's actually not much left on that to go. I do I'm at the point where I probably need to actually count how many more rows I need to do before I start the decreases. I could do it by measurement, but I'd rather I'm a bit more of a counter person. Not that it matters, like it's not it's not like, you know, left front, right front, they need to match. <laughs> you know, you don't want this one three rows more than this one. Um, because that is just like the whole center section. It's not gonna matter if um, like how long I knit that bit. It will just determine how long the final project is. So, but if I knit it to what I thought it was, it will be about 45 inches um, from tip to tip. I might just do a few extra rows because I sort of worked out I'd probably like it to be about 48 inches. So just maybe just a few more and then start decreasing. So that's the Sophie scarf. And then the last, um, my last work in progress is um, the Skimmer Socks Revisited by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And I've got two on the needles because this is my knitting that I do when I'm um, going for a walk. And I mean, the Sophie scarf, I can do that when I'm walking as well, but because I'm at the point now where I need to figure out how many more rows, I don't want to do that while, while I'm walking and then I, I've gone too far and I have to rip back, which is what happened with these socks actually. So I've got this one that's just, um, the toes done and then I knit about 16 rows before I break off and just do the bottom of the heel. So this is mustache yarns in um, leftovers um, and the colorway Kama Sutra. And so this one here, I've actually um, broken off. Um, can you see here? So see how here I've finished at the orange and now I'm just working down the bottom of the foot back and forth. And what the pattern tells you to do is a free pattern. Um, I'm working it to 64 stitches and what you do is you put um, 28 on the holder and then 36 so a little bit more than half is the bottom of the foot but I was I was walking and I got to the point where I had to split and I knew I needed two to flip over and it would be 28 and 36 but I got it wrong I just wasn't thinking I was with my son we were chatting and I didn't want to say stop can do you mind if we just stop and I'd look at the pattern and so I ended up knitting on the 28 instead of the 36. I just didn't even think about it. I mean, I should have thought about it. This is the bottom of the foot. You don't want it to be less, you want it to wrap around a little bit, not be smaller. So the 28 is meant to be the top of the foot. The 36 is the bottom, but I had it the wrong way around and I knit quite a chunk and then I had to rip back. But I forgot, I should have, um, I should have recorded ripping back. I just forgot about it. Um, Cause that's one of my tutorial videos that I want to do how to rip back safely but I was just kind of cranky at myself and I went pulled it off the needles and, and then forgot oh actually I could have ripped. but you know what there will be many more instances of ripping back this won't be the last so next time I will remember and go okay if it's a, at a good time I'll um I'll record a video of it if it's just a few rows like maybe a row or two I'll just um tink back stitch by stitch um, and if anyone wants a video on that specifically, I'm very happy to show how I do that um, stitch by stitch. We all have different ways of doing it, but the, you know, I'm happy to show you how I do it 
that's kind of, I think, pretty quick in the way that I tension the yarn so that it pulls out. And I'll also do another video where I actually, it's a number of rows and I'll rip the, rip it off the needles and then how I get it back onto, um, back onto the needles safely. So yeah, that's the Skimmer Socks um, Revisited by Sheila Toy Stromberg. That's on a 2.25 mil needle and I do the ribbing on a two millimeter needle. So that's it for my works in progress, seven. Um, it was going to be more, but um, yeah, that's, I didn't cast on any new um, ones this week. Right, so we're up to what has caught my eye. Um, these are a couple of free patterns. I saw a um, podcast by Orsa Makes where she had 10 free full knitting patterns and there were a couple of those that I thought were really pretty. So if you haven't seen, if you've already seen that video, you've seen these. Um, if you haven't seen that, the two ones that kind of caught my eye were Miles by Sana Fjalland. And that was, it looks, it's really pretty. It's got this collar and it's knit with um, a light fingering held with a silk mohair. And there's like the silk mohair is these little thin sheer strips, um, but you know, very small sort of stripes. It looks really, really lovely with these gold buttons. I'm not sure if I'd make it, um, cause I'm not sure if I'd wear it, but I just like how it looks, it looks really classy. So that's Miles and Skin by uh, Steen Holgaard Johansson. And that's knit with a sport weight 100% um, alpaca at a 23 stitch gauge. So I just thought both of them were really pretty and they are free. I think um, sometimes you'll get a free pattern or yarn companies will put out free patterns that sort of highlight their yarns and also some um, yarn stores and some yarn stores that have their own yarn like Pearl Soho, they often put out free patterns. Um, Espace Tricot puts out a lot of free patterns. Um, you Knit and Craft put out a lot of free patterns where they're free for a limited time and then they become paid. So it's good to keep an eye out for those or to sign up for newsletters so that you, I mean, Pearl Soho's I think are always free, but You Knit and Craft sometimes they're like free for a limited time. Uh, right, so that's um, my, um, what's caught my eye. Now we're up to purchases and plans. Now I will just preface this with, sometimes my plans just go on like, for forever so what I will try to do is just cut it down to what I really think I might actually cast on and it will, anything that I purchased will come in here but in terms of plans I'll just focus on things that I might actually start in the next couple of weeks just to keep it manageable so one purchase that I made was the anchor tee by petite knit sorry not anchor tee anchor summer shirt so it's the version she's got a lot of these with different like weights of yarn and you know, different sizes and stuff. But this is one that's at a 20 stitch gauge. And I did um, uh, a swatch on this Habu Bamboo and I did it on a four mil needle and it came out to 18 stitches. So I need to, if I wanna use this yarn, I need to swatch again, maybe on a, it, even that's like a little bit airy. I think I showed this last week. I'm gonna swatch again on a 3.5 millimeter needle. And the reason I purchased this this morning was um, I wanted to join, and I did join in um, with Kim and Jonna's cast on party for their petite knit along. Um, so I bought the anchor tee. I probably wasn't in a position to cast on because I hadn't done a smaller swatch. Um, so it was probably for the best because I bought the pattern, went through on PayPal, and then I got that sort of like, wait for your, you know, your purchases is going, your, um, you know, wait for a minute, PayPal or contact Ravelry, and then you'll get your um, pattern in a minute. But I'm waiting and waiting, and um, I get the email saying, yes, your payment's gone through to PayPal, but I don't get the email with my downloads, and I don't get the email, or I don't get the, it's not in my Ravelry library. So I'm not sure what's happened, the communication between PayPal and Ravelry sort of didn't connect. I don't know if that was just me, if there is a disconnect at the moment. So I just sent a message to Petite Knit and Ravelry and I'm waiting to hear back. Um, it's really hard for me. I get really impatient with things and I, I struggle when they're not resolved. And I know it will be resolved, but there's like an anxiety that comes up in me of like, well, what if it doesn't? And I'm like, what? so what if it doesn't? You just contact PayPal and have them refund you and buy it a different way, whatever. It's not a big deal. But I don't know what it is. I just, like, until something's resolved, I can be a real dog with a bone. So I'm really working on that to 
not be like that because it just creates a stress that's completely unnecessary. I have so many other things to work on. I'm not really even ready to cast on. So it's actually for my own benefit that I didn't get the pattern because I might have been in the excitement of the cast on party, tempted to cast on when I don't even have like a gauge swatch with the, the needle size that um, you know, worked out. Um, so anyway, it's for the best, but I am still also trying to plan. So I wanted to see the pattern to be able to go, okay, um, if my gauge is a bit off, are there are lots of stitches cast on under the arms? Cause that's one area where you've got a lot of wiggle room for size. So instead of casting on like with the theater top, um, was it the theater top? Yeah. So like you, you were meant to cast on like 10 stitches under the arms. Well, under each arm, that's 20 stitches, which at that gauge is four inches. You've got heaps of wiggle room there to cast on less to make it smaller. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I am quite keen to get the pattern because I'm keen to work out if, if it's, you know, if I get 19 stitches, is that still gonna be workable by just casting on less under the arms if it's turning out a bit big? So it's a purchase. I haven't got the pattern yet. I'm sure I will soon. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about instead of using this yarn is I might even use the yarn from that, that um, red top that I was wearing, the Stratford tee. I have that oh, sorry, in another colour. I have it in, um, it's Cartier Speak. I have it in this blue colour and I know I got like 21 and a half stitches over four inches with this yarn and even though the anchor summer shirt is 20 stitches that would sort of size it I want it sized down just a little bit um, so that could work for that but I when I don't have the pattern um, I don't know I need to actually to swatch properly to work out if I can do something a little bit differently with the gauge um, I do actually need the pattern so so that is a possibility um, if this one isn't going to work and what I sometimes do because this is super precious yarn to me sometimes I'll knit my first one in a different yarn that's maybe not as expensive and work out the um, work out all the nuts and bolts and um, the sizing and the fit issues with a quote unquote lesser yarn or one that's not as precious to me um, as than the one that I like um, you know I really want whatever I make with this I want it I want it to be a winner right so that's the anchor tee um, another thing that I'm thinking of making is the Sailor Swift top I'm just gonna grab some yarn actually the other I also have this pink color so um, with the Cartier Spiga I've got this blue one and I've also got this pink one this is a little bit Barbie pink um, but you know that's okay um, I do like pink um, so I could use either of those for this um, anchor summer shirt and I know that the gauge would size me down enough. Um, yes, I, I think I like I want it in this, but I might try it in this first. The other thing that is the Sailor Swift top, which uses very little yarn, and I have a lot of um, like smaller quantities of this Rowan cotton glass. Sorry, Rowan cotton glace, and I get twenty. I know I get twenty three stitches. I've already swatched with this twenty three stitches over four inches, which is the pattern gauge for the Sailor Swift top. And I've got all of these, so I need two um, colors for that. So I've got all, I've got heaps of colors actually. Um, I don't know if you can see all of those. I've got all of these colors. So I could pick any two of those pretty much for the Sailor Swift tee. I mean, obviously I'd want to pick two that go nicely together. So like maybe, oh, that, oh that's very similar to the pink velvet, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that. I mean, very different patterns, but, um, I could use those two. I could use like two pinks together. I could use two, mm, I don't know about those two, um, like a, a green and a, or that, those two. Um, anyway, I've got a few options. So I've got quite a lot of, um, a lot of these in stash. I can't, sorry, I'd, I'd love to be able to just hold all of them up and you can see all of them together. So. Yeah, anyway, I've got a few options there. I might do a little just, um, oh, those two together, the brown and the darker pink are quite nice together. Um, yeah, and that doesn't use a lot of yarn and that's using stash, which would be great. So, and yarn that I've had for a long time. 
So that's the Sailor Swift top. Um, I still plan to make the, and I am talking about these being potentially within the next two or three weeks, like not all of them, but some out of these few are pretty, because I've I sort of got yarn for it. So this is the yarn um, that I'm gonna use for the Soho top by Kadri. And that is the recommended yarn, which is Pearl Soho Sweetgrass. My gauge is a little bit um, smaller and I'm actually thinking I might just do another swatch. I use the recommended needle size, but it's a little bit tight. Um, and that actually is probably not as drapey as I maybe would like. So maybe I might try swatching on one needle size up um, or I could do a bit of adjusting for gauge. So that's, I still plan to make that. Um, I also will, I do plan to make the December bow um, by Petite Knit out of the leftovers of um, this red yarn. I think my daughter Mia might like it for a wreath. And um, Alpine Bloom, I'll just grab the yarn. Um, that's the yarn that I plan to use for Alpine Bloom. That's Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Nocturne and Peach Bellini. Um, but I would do that with a twisted rib instead of the lacy, um, the lacy edges for the, um, all the finishing treatments. So any of those could be cast on in the next couple of weeks. I didn't cast on anything new this week. So potential maybe um, with some of those. Uh, there are a few other things that I plan to make like the stripe hype sweater. Um, and I did some stash diving. But the problem with that one is you need about 650 meters of the sort of salt, the main color, um, and then you, you don't need much of the other ones. So I have yarn that would work for the contrast, but not for the main color. I don't have, and, and um, I watched a podcast with Wool Needles, wool needles Hands, and um, she was saying that she used two different um, bases of yarn, and it turned out to be a real problem. And and it is my inclination in a um, in a large garment to use the same yarn so that your stitch gauge, your row gauge, unless it's intentional like that, that sweater that had um, that mile sweater where it was meant to have like fingering, then mohair, fingering, then mohair, unless that's kind of how it's meant to be. If it's all sort of meant to be one, um, one type of yarn with just stripes, I'd like to use the same base. So I, I don't have yarn in stash. So, um, and I'm not going to buy yarn for that. I have so many plans where I have the yarn. So I'm just gonna put the, I do wanna make the stripe pipe sweater, but I'm not in a rush for that. It's also, um, you know, it's coming into summer here. So I don't really, I'm not gonna wear it anytime soon. So that will be, once I've got some of these other things, um, you know, started and finished, maybe then I'll look for yarn for that. And same with some of the other plans like camisole number four, um, the carnaby skirt, the kutar top, the field sweater, the half and half wrap, um, all of those ones that I've mentioned before, it's gonna be, I think a while before I, um, like I start those, cause I, you know, I'm gonna sort of clear the decks of my whips and start, you know, other ones that I have yarn already for, and then I'll have a think about those other sweaters. So we're up to my Hidden Whips basket. Um, I had hoped to show you a dyed skirt. Um, if you're new here, this is where I've, I've pulled out a project that was has been hibernating and I've over dyed it because it had two different tones. Um, this skirt, the Carnaby skirt. I over dyed it this really nice cherry red, but I ended up with this splotch um, where the dye sort of pooled in one section. So I've bought this, um, eggplant dye to over dye it and um, I was going to do it on the weekend but I, I really tweaked my back probably just from doing too much work at the computer and it was I was in a lot of pain throughout the weekend and there was no way I was going to be trying to lift something I couldn't even lift the kettle like when I boiled the jug so I was like I'm not going to lift big pots full of water when I've got a sore back um, but it's a lot better now and um, and so I think I might try I'll, that I plan to do that this weekend. And that's what I was thinking, that Stratford tea, the red tea that I wore, I was thinking I might over dye that as well. I won't put it in the same pot because I think the two together, that might've been what caused a problem here because I had the, this yarn I dyed and it was in the same pot. And I have a feeling that maybe that yarn sitting against this caused that pooling or that pooling of the dye, or maybe it was resting against this. So I won't put the two in at the same time. I would put this, have this exhaust as much of the dye as possible and then maybe after taking this out 
um, over dye that Stratford tea, but I'm a bit nervous about that because it kind of, now I'm sort of not, I don't mind it as much. So I'm curious as to whether you think that's worth giving a go or do you like it in the red? Do you think I should keep it? Is it like a color that suits me or, and just maybe start like wearing it a bit more, I don't know. Um, but I guess that's like, what's the point of saying start wearing it a bit more? I haven't worn it a bit more. So, or I haven't worn it much. So for whatever reason, I don't pull it out. Will I wear it more if it's purple? I'm not sure. Um, or will I just wreck it? <laughs> and that would not be good. And then my only option then would probably be to dye it black after that. So, but that's that's a plan is to over dye that purple. Um, good thing I didn't buy any buttons for this in red because it's not staying red. So we'll see if it works with the purple. Uh, where am I up to? Um, okay, uh, other craft. I haven't done any other craft this week. I had planned to sew, um, but then I didn't. Um, but yes, that's, <laughs> I'm hoping to this week, which I'll get into in my personal stuff. Right, so if you're, um, this is the, that's the end of the crafty part of the podcast. Um, if you're leaving me now, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you can do the like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you think you'd like to be notified of my, um, you know, upcoming videos, I usually try to upload them on my Thursday night, which is in the US, like Thursday morning. So I try to, sometimes it doesn't go through. And apologies for my last week's video. Um, I up. I couldn't get it to um, upload in HD and so I uploaded it with a lower resolution but then I cleared off a bunch of stuff on my phone and I managed to get it to save in and upload in HD so um, this one will hopefully be shorter than an hour I really aim to keep them under an hour and that makes it a lot easier in terms of file like just doesn't take so long to upload and um, I don't have that issue with not enough space on my phone Right, so yes, so back to personal stuff. Um, last week, what did I get up to last week? I went to the beach with Zach on Friday. We went, got, you know, went for a walk and got ice cream and I did all that knitting that I just had to undo. But, oh well, that happens. Um, I've been spending a lot of time preparing for my classes, which I think just sitting over the computer ended up hurting my back. Um, what else happened? Monday was a public holiday and we went, um, I have some friends who have a, a pizza oven and they had us over, like our whole family, um, well, me and my husband and Alex and Zach came over, uh, me was busy, but then um, we um, like had pizza and games night, which I really like because so they're a family of five as well. And so we just played these cool, um, I'll see if I can find the book. It was called, it was some math games. Um, which sounds really nerdy, but they were fun and we all enjoyed them. So um, one of them was really clever. You had to, um, well, they're all, they're all clever, but we only played a few of them. Uh, each person had to ask a question, which was had like a very definite um, answer that had a number. The answer had to be a number. Like somebody asked, how many Pizza Hut restaurants are there in New South Wales, no, in Australia. How many pizza restaurants are there in Australia? And then everybody has to guess a range. Um, I won't go into it. It's quite. It was, it was actually a bit complicated with the story, uh, the scoring, but it was fun. Um, yeah. So anyway, that was that was Monday. Um, I'm still reading um, Life Worth Living. I think I'm up to chapter six. I've read up to chapter six. So I'm chapter seven tomorrow. There's 15 chapters. So, because that's my book club for school book. I want to get through most of it before we go back to school. Um, what else? Oh, I'm, we're still watching Barry, which is really funny. Um, I really enjoy it. It's sort of gone in a funny direction. It's a little, getting a little bit weird, but there's, it's interesting um, as he keeps doing, he's trying to be good, but he keeps doing the wrong thing to get himself out of trouble and how it's changing him, how going against his conscience is, is really affecting him and it's he's becoming um, less and less balanced and more unstable um, and how what that what that does to you making conscious choices to go against your conscience um, how damaging that is and the other thing that is sort of a bit of a theme that's been coming through is um, for someone who's in like a woman who's in an abusive relationship um, what happens how it happens how you try to appease someone change yourself to please the other person. Um, so it's got a lot of subtext, like even though it's quite funny, it's got a lot of um, subtext that's quite sort of serious and thought provoking. So, which I quite like in a, in a show. It's not all sort of, you know, laughs and silliness. 
there's some stuff that makes you think. Anyway, so that's, we've been watching Barry. We've still probably got another season and a half to go. Um, this week coming up, um, I'm still spending a lot of work preparing for um, extension two. Um, today's Wednesday, I think Thursday and Friday, I'm probably gonna spend two solid days um, getting all my lessons ready. Um, I've got, so yeah, I'm back to school next week because it's Wednesday, I'm back to school, actually back to school staff day on Monday and then back teaching on Tuesday. And as of next week, I've got three mornings a week where I teach classes at 7 a.m. So, and we've just had daylight savings where we've lost an hour, turned all the clocks back earlier. So that means the 7 a.m. start is the equivalent of what was 6 a.m. <laughs> actually in the classroom teaching at that time. So that's gonna be pretty full on, three out of five mornings a week. Um, being uh, in the classroom at that time. So hopefully I'll be on my game teaching like quite challenging. I think that's better than after school though because the kids are all really tired at that point. So as long as they make it there um, and they're ready to go, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So that's next week. And the only other thing that's coming up, it's not coming up straight away, but we're planning. Uh, we're planning to go to the US this Christmas. So my husband's American and his um, dad lives and his dad's wife live in San Jose and so we'll, we'll probably go there spend a few um, we'll spend a few weeks in the US they have uh, my father-in-law and mother-in-law have a place in Lake Tahoe and so just on the Nevada side so we'll go up there do a bit of skiing and I'm also really hoping to get to New York um, I haven't been to New York um, I used to live there. I lived there for a couple of years from 2000 to 2002 and I lived in Manhattan and I was there during 9-11 and it was a really intense, it was a very intense time of my life in general because I was um, a lawyer there and I was working crazy hours and I was a little bit lost. Um, I was a bit, I didn't really find a community. I wasn't, I was sort of knitting at the time but I wasn't part of a knitting community. The hours were really crazy. We were just like you know, working nonstop. Um, and I did some really amazing things. I loved some aspects of living in New York, but I never really felt like I um, belonged. And it was, it's a hard city to break into, to um, get friends. So, and I'd make friends, but I'd usually make friends with other internationals and then they'd leave. So I left there in early 2002 and came back to Australia and re retrained as a teacher and um, then met my husband, had kids, all that sort of stuff. But I love New York as a city. Um, I love the theater, the art galleries, the city itself, Manhattan is so alive and all of the surrounding um, boroughs, I guess you call them. Um, yeah, I just, I love the city. I went back once when my daughter Mia was 18 months old and I went back with my mum and um, they hadn't, I haven't been since they've re, like done the whole, um, you know, uh, changes to where the Twin Towers were and all of the, you know, um, what do you call it? The um, section for remembrance for it. Like I'd, I'd really like to see that in person. Um, and I just, I, like I love the city. So we're planning um, to, my husband and I, to go together and maybe Zach as well. Um, we'd li I'd like to take Zach there actually so um, and we've got a little bit more time than perhaps the girls so that's kind of in the planning to get to the US for Christmas um, like leaving sort of early December and spending about a month over there some time on the west coast some time on the east coast and um, yeah getting back to New York I'm quite I am quite excited I'd love to be going to Rhinebeck unfortunately Rhinebeck occurs in the middle of term time for me and I just can't get that time off work until I get long service leave. So I am hoping, um, I've been at my school at the end of this year for eight years, and after 10 years, we get a, a 10 weeks leave that you can take through in any time in the year, as long as you get approval. So I'm hoping in a couple of years time, um, and Beck is keen to come with me, um, I'd like to get to Rhinebeck. I've actually been up to Rhinebeck, to the area, but not during the Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, the, some friends of mine had a place in Poughkeepsie, so I'd go up and stay there a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've never actually been when the Sheep and Wool Festival was on. And even though I was knitting then, I wasn't what you would call a capital K knitter. I would just buy yarn, make something, 
finish it and that would be done like I didn't own a stash I didn't have a ton of needles I wasn't an everyday knitter like I am now so yeah it'd be really lovely to go um, at some point in the future anyway I've rambled enough um, thanks for watching and um, I'll be back next week